afternoon. We are, we're almost there. You know, a conversation about new worlds would not be complete without hearing from our next group of speakers. Those of you who were here last year will remember we kicked off a, a 15 minute segment with a couple of high school kids, Tyler and Sarah. Do you guys remember Tyler and Sarah? Yeah. Who were tremendously inspirational and they were so inspirational that my friend Peter Bryant and I decided we wanted to push this again. And this year what we got, I'm gonna ask you guys to take your seats. We got three high school students, one from the Orange County School that we um, had a representative from last year one from the city of Chicago, and one from the city of Miami. So what I'm gonna ask them to do is, is come up and, and um, have a conversation with you, have, let you know what they're thinking. We had a competition at all of these high schools where the students um, first wrote essays and then they had speaking competitions, and these three won these slots um, to come and spend three days with the King Group. The prompt that was given to them was, given your view of where the world is going, what do you think should be done by private enterprise, governments, and individuals, and how do you see yourself as making a part of this a reality? So that's the topic, and first up is someone who I'm gonna introduce a little bit because she's not in the program. Gwen Antonor is a replacement for the person who was gonna come. We had some schedule conflicts or something like that, so Gwen found out last week maybe that she was coming. Gwen is um, a junior at Booker T. Washington. This is, you know, she's, you can tell she's a natural Kinian because she rolls with the punches, right, Rob? This is something we, learn, we have to learn how to do. Um, she is a junior at Booker T. Washington here in Miami. She is a member of the student organization, student government organization. She's vice president of NHS. She is a sports, in, uh, head of the sports medicine club. She is the youngest in a fa an immigrant family, youngest of 11, and she will be the first in her family to go to college. So Gwen, put in truth. When we are born, we start to feel what is in our best interest. The air that we inhale, is an intuitive aspect of the beginning of our lives. We push ourselves into this thought that we are responsible for the skills that create our human image, especially after a sense of identity loss. There exists those individuals who offer the rest of their lives to the commitment of the research and improvement of our future who develop innovative scientific knowledge to assess our health. Who, who should be better to determine what the future for us should look like than those biomedical engineers who use technology to arrange and revitalize the face of our future. The future will be organized through immense advances in technology to improve healthcare. When examining what the future will be, appear to be socially, one would see the facets of technology will immensely improve patient care through biomedical engineering. This is important because statistics of life expectancy will rapidly increase. And these advances in scientific practice will develop state-of-the-art medicines in which we will fight diseases and offer assistance via physical rehabilitation and reconstruct muscle and tissue tearing. The civic actions of individuals should, should take in order for biomedical engineers to be able to assist in all necessities is to vote. Vote to improve research programs for the type of technology that will renovate our world. Also, individuals get involved by participating in research programs, taking surveys, and willingly help with testing so the results can be more accurate and biomedical engineers can modify their equipment to the best of their ability to aid our health and safety. It is important for people to be able to be active in society and participate in their civic duties. The role that I see in making this a reality is attending university that will allow me to pursue a STEM career in incorporating 
biomedical technology into sports medicine. When people are injured, whether it's from sports or sitting with bad posture at a computer for too long, <laughs> some of you are thinking about bad posture right now, technology will make it easier to diagnose problems at an earlier stage, to find injuries and discover new technologies to deal with these injuries. New technology and biomedical machines will assist in surgeries, increasing positive patient outcomes. All in all, it is definite that our future will be a better place to live in because the advances in technology that will be offered. It is certain that private enterprises, governments, and individuals will come together to make this expected future a reality. Thank you. Thank you, Gwen. I want to I want to thank um, Jocelyn Cortez Young. She's probably here in the room who helped me find this wonderful student at this at the school. Thank you very much for running point here in Miami. Next up is Max Sheridan from Chicago. He attends the GCE Labs, and I want to thank Tom Tui for helping me find Max. Hello. It's a privilege to be here with all of you today. My name is Max Sheridan, and I'm a 17-year-old from Chicago. For the first 12 years of my formal education, I attended Francis W. Parker, a private school in Chicago that describes itself as a progressive institution. Unfortunately, my many years there showed me otherwise. On the surface, there was nothing wrong. I always earned very good grades and was an active participant in the classroom as well as in social situations. Unfortunately, under this facade, my experiences were filled with anxiety, negativity, and fear. My creative confidence suffered and my natural passions and fascinations dwindled away. I was denied the opportunity to explore my creative capacities and my mistakes were viewed negatively rather than as essential components to my learning process. Throughout the years, school became decreasingly meaningful and relevant for me personally and what I thought the world ought to be. That said, my awareness and open-mindedness have helped me to formulate an understanding of the inflated value society gives to formal education. And I know this because I survived my experience. I recognized the disastrous situation I was in and took action. I advocated for myself, engaged my family in the process, and transformed my educational journey. As I stand here today, I am proud to say that I just completed my junior year at GCE Lab School, a global citizenship experience and my best school year ever. Globally speaking, education systems are developed and run with the intention of creating students that fit into a prescribed box rather than allowing self-actualization to reign supreme. Our widespread greed and adherence to the monetary system has had detrimental effects on the ways in which we educate the children of the world. Schools work towards transforming their students into job-ready citizens. For the vast majority of students, school slowly but surely diminishes one's inner and true self by forcing them to conform to the norm. One's innate creativity and problem-solving skills are soon replaced by traditional and consistent forms of thought. Rather than encouraging students to explore their creative capabilities and learning who they truly are, the education system tells students who they are and who they will become. Creative literacy is an understanding of the mental, emotional, and sociological tools used for creative thought. We live in a pragmatic world and creativity is commonly perceived to be a polar opposite to pragmatism. Being able to approach situations and issues in a non-traditional, more conceptual way allows for a wide variety of possible outcomes. Students deserve to have their uninhibited minds stimulated and have their creativity be cherished rather than diminished and looked down upon. Every individual has a unique capacity to think and create, and I believe it is time to call upon the educational system as a whole to recognize the vast possibilities that can come from the nurturing and promoting of creativity in school. In my opinion, the purpose of school is for students to undergo personal growth and improvement rather than to be formed into yet another embodiment of the norm. Humans are innately good creatures who possess positive tendencies. The idea of personal accumulation of wealth often works in direct contradiction to humans' innate tendency to share and cooperate. Following in the footsteps of ancient wisdom, science is discovering a variety of evidence about humans being hardwired for compassion and connection. So much of the power we possess as humans comes from our ability to be sympathetic, cooperative, and work in unison on complex tasks. In Descendant of the Man, 
Charles Darwin uses the famous phrase, survival of the fittest, two times, but he uses the word love 95 times. We must all work together to alter our future by first refining ourselves. We must recognize that less is more and use our innate abilities to create and work together to address and then solve the issues facing us. I believe in the brighter side of humanity and believe that changing the world is both about what you can do and who you can be. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up is Catherine Edelman. She attends St. Margaret's High School in Orange County. And thank you, Peter, for helping me find Catherine. The world of science is often perceived to be a place of cold facts, hard truths, and little human compassion, where success is strictly quantitative and nothing more. And this is a perspective that needs a monumental shift, because once we realize that a humanitarian focus can be used to direct scientific innovation, we can utilize science to, have, to significantly impact the social, environmental, and economic spheres. The intellect of science allows for incredible creations, but it is the character and purpose behind science that generates relevant solutions. I want to participate in the world's future as a scientist, but I am not only referring to a white lab coat in a research facility. I want to participate in the, in the future as an informed and curious global citizen, constantly problem solving in unexplored areas of both the scientific and social worlds. Curiosity and a willingness to accept, even pursue, scientific discovery and advancement need to take the place of the current confusion, lack of understanding, and sometimes fear that are often associated with technological change. We have an ever-growing array of technology and scientific recommendations that are available to begin the reversal of the damage that's been done to the environment. But in order to realize that potential, we need a public commitment and change of, change of mindset and a united and focused global effort. We often place responsibility for change solely on large influential groups, governments and corporations. But governments and corporations are comprised of individuals. And while it's easy to argue that a single person can't make a difference, a problem arises when towns and cities and countries are full of millions of individuals who have all decided that any difference they each could make doesn't matter. This applies to the betterment of not only the environment, but also the social sphere. To further the improvement of global social conditions, we each need to bring a continuous awareness to the hardships that are faced by so many people in order for those hardships to be addressed. To combat problems such as poverty, hunger, and disease, any technological advancement in these fields, water purifiers or food distribution systems, is able to have a widespread impact. Additionally, when coupled with appropriate government and population perspective, an innovative and scientific approach to issues such as a general public attitude of intolerance and the policy of othering those who are different can have an incredible effect. For example, an increased knowledge of the human brain has the potential to erase certain stigmas. We are part of the global population that is beginning to establish science as a bridge across disciplines, changing the world so that scientific knowledge is accepted and not disregarded on whims, and changing science to habitually consider social possibilities and consequences. Scientific ingenuity has a powerful role to play in our future, and not only to create hoverboards or fly to Jupiter or make an Iron Man suit, but also to create advanced prosthetic limbs, develop cheap but sturdy materials to build shelters in struggling areas, and connect people around the world through improving communication technology. A harmony between technological innovation and human compassion um, can achieve the better future we all dream of. I encourage everyone in attendance today as globally recognized leaders, entrepreneurs, and innovators to consider interdisciplinary science as a possible problem solver, no matter the field and to think about how each of you can strive to better understand the world of science and to help others do so as well. Thank you. So, uh, you know, I don't know about the rest of you, but you know, when you, whenever you hear about kids in the news today, it's never good news. And all you need to do is spend a few minutes with kids like this and you're just tremendously inspired. Please join me in thanking them once again. Thanks.